<laughs> Peter, wake up! You're having a nightmare. Oh, oh, Lois. Thank God, it was just a dream. Hey, Lois, what's that fat man doing in our bed? Ah, uh, damn it. I always wake up before I find out if they can understand the baby. Family Guy. Baby. Stewie Griffin. Who can understand him? Who can't understand him? Let's find out. I'm sick of writing these intros to these videos. If you clicked on this, you already know what the fuck Family Guy is, so here. Let's go, go, go! Today's video is actually brought to you by the service Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service. Just like how Netflix allows you to watch hundreds of different titles, Scentbird gives you the opportunity to receive scents from over 600 brands in just a few clicks. It is a flexible subscription too, so you can like skip any month without penalties. All gender inclusive and real inexpensive, you can choose a new fragrance to try each and every month for just $17. Scentbird carries top designer brands like Prada or Versace, as well as indie labels like Vince Campo, The Harmonist, and Confessions of a Rebel. Oh! Put you sent bird to find out. Based on your preferences, previous purchases, and a simple little small quiz on the website, Scentbird will help you find a fragrance that you love. They actually hooked the boy up so I could test it out. This month I got Aqua de Parma, which I'm positive I said wrong, but it's definitely the one that I've used the most. Mercedes Benz, Sign Your Attitude, which ironically smells like what it feels like to listen to Aston Martin music in the summertime by Rick Ross. Uh. And Kinetic GMT which I just think is neat. And they come with these new cases too, which you just turn to the side and press down to spray. Then you pull it right back up and then move it to the side again to lock it. That way it makes it easy for travel. You're tired of having numerous half empty perfume bottles just lying around your room. Let Scentbird help you be a smart and conscious consumer. Never be bored of your scent and save hundreds of dollars on unfinished bottles. Bottles of perfume can cost anywhere between $150 to $500 and even more. Yet with Scentbird, you get a luxury flavoring for just seven dollars using my code you'll look good feel good and smell amazing you will never hear this set around you again no good look good my nigga if you live in the united states or canada make sure to use my coupon code in the description for 55 percent off it's just seven dollars for your first month let's use the coupon code in the description to save 55 percent off on your first month with scentbird Why are there so many ads? Fuck you, nigga. I got kids to feed. On the subject of who can understand Stewie, let's break it up into three different categories. Always, sometimes, and never. And with the show as inconsistent as Family Guy is, you can already tell which one has the most characters. For the sake of simplicity, let's not include children characters. If there's a toddler, they can more than likely understand Stewie because he's more than likely the only character that actually interacts with them anyway. If you have to question if Doug can understand Stewie, you just don't know who Doug is. And honestly, Neither do I. This nigga just kind of showed up one day, bruh. Also, I think it's safe to say that we should leave the Stewie Kills Lois two-parter out of this discussion because, spoiler alert for a fucking 15-year-old episode of television, but that episode is entirely a simulation and didn't actually happen. I also understand that this is just a stupid, silly cartoon and it's not that serious, nor do the writers actually care about any of this. I'm just doing this because I can, and if you have an issue with that, you don't want to click on the thumbnail, bruh. I don't really know what to tell you. You just got to do some like soul searching or some shit. Let's get the always characters out the way. The obvious one being Brian. Whoa, that's a hoy. <laughs> Brian and Stewie's relationship is arguably the most important in the entire show and it's all based on their back and forth, their banter. If you want to hear more about their connection, check out this video that I did on them. I'll talk about Family Guy a lot up here, partially because I have no self-control. Then there's Chris. Stewie and Chris is a duo that the show focused on a lot more recently, but I think people only casually familiar with the show don't even realize that it's an actual thing. I didn't realize it at first, but they actually set them up understanding each other as early as the third episode. Hey, Stinky, uh, have we got some big plans for you? Plans? 
the devil are you talking about? It's your birthday, dude! And in recent years, there's been full episodes where the two of them have interacted, had adventures. It's nice. Stewie, Chris, and Brian just kind of have their own little squad going on. And uh, whoever the hell Eric is. You know who would love this? Eric. Oh, yeah, this is right up Eric's alley. The sometimes is where I think it starts to get really interesting. Early on, when Stewie would talk, the family would like look at him and everything, but as the years go on, they barely even flinch. Just because they look at him, though, doesn't mean that they actually understand what he's saying. They could just be hearing Goo Goo Gaga shit every time he peels his lips open. You never really know. So it is proven on multiple occasions that Peter can understand Stewie, but only to a certain degree. If you ask me, I'd say that this starts as early as Brian and Love in season two. Fam, this clip was impossible to find because I don't think anyone remembers it. Hey, I oughta just give you some beer, it goes right through you. Wonderful, and while we're at it, we can light up a doobie and watch porn. It, yeah? Like, notice how he very clearly heard all of that. In the courtship of Stewie's father from season four, the two spend the entire episode together and that understanding bits and pieces thing really tracks here. He can tell Stewie's highs and lows and his emotions and he responds to them, but not directly to anything that he's saying for the most part. But then there's moments like this one where Peter directly answers a question that Stewie asks. You think he's dead? Nah, nah, he'll be back on his feet in no time. Probably following Jonathan Dolgen's footsteps, wind up with a pod deal over a touchstone. But the most important thing about this aspect, I think, is that it's actually said by Peter himself multiple times. They have this conversation in Dead Dog Walking. You're such a bitch. She's a bitch? Meg, you said you wouldn't tell Stewie's secrets. Stewie, you told Dad? I had to get it off my chest. I didn't think he'd understand me. I understand pieces now and then. And he says, as this in Inside Family Guy. But I know now that I'm nothing without all of you. Oh, that's nice of you to say. Thank you, Stewie, who I can understand. Which is like, barely canon, but whatever. In just last week's season 21 episode, <laughs> Peter goes looking for Chris and walks in on Stewie and they have a quick back and forth. Yeah, Pop, what's up? Oh, I'm so sorry. I think really the hardest one to crack the code on is Lois, Stewie's mom. Lois! Ah, Lois! 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 Mom! 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 Mommy! 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 Mama! 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 What? Hi. <laughs> to my knowledge, or at least to my recent memory, Lois understands Stewie word for word a total of two times throughout the entire series. That's this clip from Mind Over Murder, a season one episode where she responds to him telling her to burn in hell. Bye bye, Stewie. Mommy will be upstairs to kiss you goodnight. Burn in hell! Hell. Hell has fire. And there's this bit from the Family History episode that gets shared on Twitter all the time, where Peter tells the family that he doesn't like The Godfather. You know, I can't even get through, I can't even finish the movie. I've never even seen the You've ending. You've never seen the ending? Well, well, how can you say you don't like it if you haven't even given it a chance? I but agree with Stewie, it's not really fair. I think early on, Lois could at least understand Stewie's mood. Bend down, mother. Yes, honey? Kind of like what I was saying about Peter earlier. If he was upset, she could tell that he's upset. If he's happy, she can tell that he's happy. But lately, it just kind of seems like all of that just kind of falls on deaf ears. I need to show them that I deserve to be customer of the week. You don't. Well, they probably see a woman like me and think <laughs> she's got it all. They don't. There's also the theory that the family could always hear Stewie, that they just choose to ignore him. But I don't think uh, that I like this one. <laughs> this nigga be coming a little too crazy for it to be like, oh, that's just baby talk thing. Nigga saying Seth said it, but what the oh, fuck does he know? He ain't been in the writer's room since 2011, go read a book or something. And here's a quick lightning round of miscellaneous characters. When Stewie and Brian travel back in time with Morton in season seven, he can understand him the entire time. Whenever. Damn it, will you two just get in the fucking time machine? But they rarely even glance at each other throughout the rest of the series after this. Stewie tells both Joe and Cleveland that their outfits don't work, but Again, only once. Loretta tells Stewie to his face that she barely understands the gist of what he's saying. Really? Isn't she one of those people outside the family who can understand me? No, I think because of Cleveland, she's close enough to the main cast that it might be a little weird. Really? We're filming! Well, I get the gist of what you're saying, Stewie. In season five, Brian and Stewie get in Adam West's car and ask him to follow a truck. But this one's a little tricky because they both say it at the same time. Follow that truck! Didn't you hear me? I said follow that truck! Oh, I heard you. What I didn't hear was, please. Please follow the truck! And in season 16's Send in Stewie, please, Stewie has a full-on in-school therapist that understands everything he says easily. 
this is my real voice. All right, so then we finally move on to the Never characters. I think the only immediate Griffin family member that has never been able to hear Stewie once in the entire 21 seasons of the show's run is Meg. There are Meg and Stewie episodes and there are Meg and Stewie moments with them together for sure. But as far as I know, she understands that Stewie can do all of these extravagant things like go back in time or save her from human trafficking long story. But I think she just hears baby talk when he speaks. No, no, don't leave me on the phone with her. Stewie? Hey, how school? Hi, Stewie. Never have these two had one real actual conversation or a regular natural back and forth. I've seen Lego My Mego be referenced in this conversation before, like just through my research, but Meg actually never talks to Stewie in that. Stewie? Hi, Meg. I know I referenced Cleveland and Joe earlier in the lightning round, but honestly, those could just be seen as quick jokes. I don't think anything else tracks to lead you to believe that these characters can understand this baby. I've been kind of thinking that unless it's just for like a quick gag like those, for the most part, if there's an adult that's close to Peter or Lois, they just can't understand Stewie. That includes other family members like Carter and Babs. Ow! However, someone like Elle, who was practically created as a Stewie-centric character at first, and has only recently been seen hanging out with Lois and the girls. Tell us, tell us, after you had dinner, how was the pork? Who is this bitch? Can still understand them as far as I know. In season 21, Quagmire and Stewie spend the entire episode together and Quagmire does not understand him once. There's even been times that Brian and Stewie are on screen having a conversation with Quagmire, but it is very, very clear that only Brian is heard. And I think that's just how they're gonna keep it, to be honest. The season 19 premiere is titled Stewie's First Word, and it kinda insinuates that the show kinda operates on this Rugrats logic. That eventually Stewie will be heard but it has to be through his sheer passion and emotion. In the second Rugrats movie, it's because Chucky really doesn't want his daddy to marry his French lady. And in Family Guy, it's because he can't have cookies in church. <laughs> this is the explanation they gave. Why did everyone suddenly understand you now? I don't know. I was feeling so much intense emotion in the moment, and that one word somehow just burst through. So I guess now every Griffin can understand Stewie if he either says fuck or mommy, or at least whenever he means those things. <laughs> I don't know, man, who cares? None of this really matters, like, at the end of the day. I think Family Guy is funny because none of this stuff is actually consistent, and they use it to mold these fun character relationships. Is Stewie being passive aggressive to Lois just as funny if she could actually hear him? Fuck no. Does a story about Chris and Stewie and Rupert function properly if Chris can't hear him? Of course not. I think it's cool that this show has been on long enough to the point where people just kind of stop caring to figure this out and they could just sit back and let the show steer the ship. It's not perfect, but honestly, if that's what you're looking for, you've def been watching the wrong cartoon this entire time. <laughs> There is some set of rules about it. Brian obviously understands them. We go out of our way to make sure that Lois or Peter doesn't. Sometimes if he's outside the house, yeah. strangers that we're going to see for one episode and maybe not come back to, we'll, we'll make within, the allowance. Within the family, there, you know, it's like we, we made sort of a leap with Chris this year that, all right, well, Chris, you know, he can interact with Chris in a, in a real way. He can't really interact with Meg or Peter or Lois because the idea is that they're old enough that there is a separation. Once you get out of the house, as Steve says, it, it really depends on the story. If it's funnier for the story that uh, there be a language barrier, great. If it's better for somebody to understand them so there can be interaction, that's great too. And it's, it's you know, there there is uh, there is room for messing with the rules if it suits the comedy. Oh, Peter, isn't he amazing? Is he smart or, or is he like me? He's perfect. You guys heard the baby talking in there, didn't you? Chris, that's ridiculous. Hey, good looking out, Scent Bird. Thanks for the sponsorship, homie. So what's it gonna be, him or me? We can cruise the world with pearls, gator boots for girls. The envy of all women, crushed linen, Cartier wristwear with diamonds in them. The finest women I love with the passion. Your man's a wimp, I get that ass a good thrashing. High fashion, flying into all states. Sexing me while your man masturbates. Isn't this great? Your flight leaves at eight. Her flight lands at nine. My game just rewinds. Lyrically, I'm supposed to represent. I'm a little crazy in this shit. <laughs> 